This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. Welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. And uh, we're sticking with a, a trend as of late. The last episode, remote from the Minnesota State Fair. Here we are again. This time we're at Wild Off the Tee, the Royal Golf Club in Lake Elmo. Uh, good little event they have here with some corporate sponsors uh, like, like yourself, you That's know, right. Mr. King. That's and, right. We're in. We paid our money. Yeah, you get a spot. And who are you golfing with today? Because the deal is... You, you come in, you get a foursome, you play with uh, one of the players, and all the money goes to the foundation, Minnesota Wild Foundation. That's correct. We uh, Last year we played with Big Jake Middleton. It was a treat. We had Sturgis motorcycle rally stories before we even teed off on one. I'm told he was plucked away by another sponsor, so we had to submit a list. You might notice uh, <laughs> I got the Brock Faber glasses on today. Um, got them for all the boys in our group, so... Uh, we're going to, you know, give Brock, uh, make him feel comfortable. You know, he probably gets called four eyes a lot and maybe bullied as a young player. But we're all going to show up in kind of unison with our Brock Faber glasses on today. Well, hopefully he takes it as a compliment and uh, <laughs> not as it. So, but let's go through this list because I did hear you submitted a list. and I did. Um, it's, I think this is good content. I would be curious what the other Wild fans would. So imagine Wild fans, you're in a situation. It's a beautiful day today. I mean, this is a great day, right? Yeah. And this is kind of the last, this is the get out of jail free day for the wild. This is like where they can stretch their legs, let down their hair. It's a great event right before the season starts. And you just lost your guy. So Middleton, his black and white t-shirts get yanked away by some fanny sponsor. Pack. Didn't he have a fanny pack last he year? He did. He, he was break his tee, pull one out of his fanny pack, and yep. then boom. Yeah, and maybe reload. maybe did he stick a tee in his ear? Was yeah. that what he was doing, yeah. if I remember? So when we submitted uh, replacement players, we went one moose. I think trying to like maybe compensate for you know making sure they took care of us. Two Patty Maroon. This is going to be bad with Faber if he's like he's like lower on the list. Well, this is where I was going as you. Yeah, we, now we, you trapped we, me. Yeah, you trapped. <laughs> this is in, walked you right into it. I'm wearing glasses for God's sake. <laughs> Three Hartsy. You'll like this. Four Shaw. I don't even know what team he's on. I don't know if he can golf. Is he golfing? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't even know if he's signed or what his deal is. Sorry about that. Five Faber. Six Duhaim, the underwater angler. Uh, seven, Freddie Goudreau, eight, Addison, nine, Fleury. I mean, we went deep, I, looking for coverage. Um, so we're, we got number five on our list. Part, uh, of me, part of me wants to take a second to analyze that list. Number four in your heart. Well, Marc-Andre Fleury's never been number nine at anything in his life other than on your list to golf with. <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's very charming um, and French. A day like today, it's a little bit more like a zin in your lip and uh, music on the – you know, playing some Zach Bryan, and I, I don't know. I, I think we wanted to be a little bit more untucked. And that's what Faber seems like to you. Yeah, I, well, I think, yeah, between Maroon, Hartsey, Faber, those guys feel like uh, they are they know their way around a golf course a little bit. And uh, But, hey, we beggars can't be choosers, Carts. I'm uh, – I'm pretty sure I'm at the bottom of the sponsor list here. They're, they're looking. They'll be looking. They'll be chasing me down for that check for about a month. <laughs> opening night. Opening night. You'll see me outside of the gate. I just think it's great. Most people probably put like three people on their list. Kinger went nine deep on his list. Like he or he, every every player in order. Boom, 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 boom. Well, you know, and it took a long like time. You wanted to know where you stand in the sponsor list. Well, because I had to. I had to run it through the group text because. This isn't a cheap tournament to play, and they give a bunch of money to the foundation, which is awesome. But I had to make sure the guys were, like, they they were excited about the guy we got or whatever. So we had to it went it went around the group text, you know, the the order was changing, and yeah. So we're pretty excited about Brock Faber. Had the the wife went out to the costume store. These Brock Faber glasses. I don't know if Brock's real glasses are the same way. These used to have eyebrows on them. I remove the eyebrows and I remove the plastic nose. That's how you get to the real Brock Faber glasses. So um, we'll see if this goes over like a lead balloon or not. 
as, orga- as organized as I am, we may not even be playing with him. I might have the wrong guy. You, might, <laughs> just you probably up. signed up for the wrong tournament. I'm, I'm with Freddie Goudreau. <laughs> we all got glasses on. Great. What's up, Freddie? Yeah, I don't know, but um, I'm excited. Beautiful day. Let's get loose. Do you think Faber's glasses have lenses? I'm going to take a good look at them. I, I would like to wear them at some point today if we get cozy. Um and just see what his prescription is, you know, just get a little bit closer to one of our blue liners. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't They might be the same as these. He might, he might just remove the, uh, the uh, Groucho Marx um, attachments, and that's Brock Faber's glasses. But well, I want to take a second again and just note uh, the sponsors. They have traveled with us here today. Sure have. You know, we've got Jimmy's Salad Dressings and Dips, Aquarius Home Services, Wild Construction, Cub Foods has joined us, Duke Cannon, the... Uh, you know, he'll be, they'll be sponsoring our guest later, which is going to be Matt Boldy. Correct. Who we've been told not to talk golf with, but we're going to sneak in a couple of golf questions for Mr. Boldy. Uh, and then, you know, always, as always, presented by uh, Pilot Games here. So That's um, right. Good little mobile setup. Uh, let's, you know, we just got done with the rookie tournament little bedard show I, I opened up instagram on friday and it was tria rink and bedard had a hat trick against it was the st louis blues uh rookies i suppose you can call them and boy the wild got a pretty good bump on their socials i, I would guess from that with the video yeah, he and was, everything that they're spitting out on that but he was everywhere he was snapping them in looked like the crowd was packed too people going to see the baby the newborn baby um but I guess we won the second game, lost the first, right, in the showcase? Yeah, so that's where it was like probably painful for Wild fans to see Chicago get the number one overall draft pick and then come into town in their arena, score three, get all the buzz. A lot of PTSD coming, like Patrick Sharp. Like I'm just you know, start to have feelings seeing that jersey again. We don't need them to be good again. But let's read between the lines because Bedard did not play in game number two against the Wilds. Scared of us. Rookies. Yeah, I think yeah. that might be true. You know, the big bad boys, the big, yeah, the Seven Street Savages. He they didn't saw, want Bedard out there without a little bit of help. Sammy Walker hat trick. You know, I mean, they don't want any part of that. Yeah, they don't eat cake. Yeah, I think I, mean, I didn't watch the games. I saw highlights. I tried to read what I could on it. But Sammy Walker did apparently have a real good game. The second game, it looked like a good match too. It wasn't like a blowout. A lot of offense, which I think you're excited about too. When I look at the prospect pool, you know, Sammy Walker, I think he's one of those guys that's, that's got a chance to make the team out of training camp. And uh, I think there's also real competition between the wild draft picks on the back end, the D. Uh, and, and one of those guys might be able to fight for not only a roster spot, for pro- probably for some minutes on opening night, too. So um, those tournaments matter. And you just throw guys out there. It, all the younger guys, it gets them into camp a couple days early. It gets them settled a couple of games. Um, it helps them hit training camp with their feet running a little bit. So we'll keep an eye out on those guys. I, I feel like they tend to have a little bit of an advantage the first couple of days of camp because they have been here, uh, do have a game under their belt. Um, but Sammy Walker, Brock Faber actually, we're talking about the glasses, but he went into the summer saying it's the most important summer of his off, uh, of his life. This summer? This summer was. Okay. And how he was going to train, how he's going to get ready for this year. And Sammy Walker is one of the guys that trained with him all summer long and looks like it paid dividends already in this rookie showcase game. There was a guy in our first game, is it Hunter Haight? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. He almost had a Gordy Howe hat trick. He, I was looking him up online. He seems like he could be a cowboy. Likes to mix it up, got the good hair, can put it in the net. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's he, he might be number ten on my list to golf with. <laughs> I'll throw him in there if uh, if things get really dire. But yeah, it looked like they had some fun prospects and um, man, youth is everything. As we weather this cap era and try to get through, if you can get contribution from some of these young guys, get a little jolt, maybe band aid us through a section of the season. It's huge. Well, I think that's where it's exciting for these guys too. You look at the roster and with the situation at the Wilder Inn with their the cap space and there's there's opportunity all those guys will be making affordable or, or they'll have affordable contracts so if you can play you're going to be put right in that lineup you know and that, I think that's all you can ask for as one of these young guys is hey just give me a chance there are, there are certain half this league guys are boxed out prospects are boxed out of roster spots it's never going to happen here, based on the cap situations, those guys have legitimate opportunities, so they have to be excited about that for sure. And um, that's why those games matter. 
You know, it seems like they don't. They matter. You can make a good impression. Uh, Billy showed that last year too. Dean, the same. Like, if if you can play, you're gonna play. And um, I think the, I heard a few guys had uh, good showings. Hey, you had a story. Uh, I happened to text you over the weekend. You said you maybe had an eventful weekend. You have something you consider sharing on the pod here what what's uh what's going on carts well since we're at the golf course i i do feel it's okay to share all right i, I play in a golf tournament at stone ridge uh, stone ridge golf course over in it's probably woodbury maybe it's west lakeland somewhere over there but it's a hard course lots of sand yeah yeah tough course it's a two-day tournament afternoon round thursday calcutta auction thursday night nice yep friday round and if you happen to be in the top 12 or near the top 12 of 50 some teams on friday you get to a shootout where it's you and your partner of alternate shot and you just have to stay alive lowest couple scores on each hole get bounced and um so we went in thursday didn't play great at all probably bottom quarter of all teams and uh i had the initials show friday morning so i was a k fan yeah k fan so initials program Right up till 9, 10 a.m. tee off in Woodbury. I was in St. Louis Park fighting Oof. traffic, going east, like stressed, trying to get there on time. It's a shotgun start, cannot be late, or tournament's over. Uh, but I, I mentally mailed it in. Yeah. I did. I was like, well, was, we're just going to go out and have fun. Like, we'll just see what happens. The chances of us playing beyond the, the 18 holes today is really slim. I, I know what's going to happen. We ended up squeezing in. Then we're in the shootout. Chip in a chair. Alternate, yep, chip in a chair, alternate shot, and we just go lights out. So now all of a sudden we're uh, we're on the 18th hole, and it's my group and my buddy, Derek McCarty, with uh, another friend, best man at my wedding, Chad Larson, and Tim Egan, and it's four pals fighting for this tournament right now. We go down, we tie on the 18th hole, so it comes down to a chip off, one man chip off, and they squeeze it out. We lose by like two feet you should have gone like jack nicholas um gary player and like just 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 it's a draw with you four to shake hands the sun's going down an ultimate show of sportsmanship the four good friends together forever walk together forever carts yeah it went the other way actually they wanted to double down <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to put... they're, like, they're just trying to bury you yeah. <laughs> erase everything good you did exactly um uh, but we end up uh, uh losing it and that ends about 8 o'clock, right around sunset. We couldn't go back and play the hole. It had to be a chip-off. We're out of light. We go in. We have a shot of tequila. I got another buddy in Vegas uh, who lives in Vegas who was turning 40, uh, and he had a couple of friends out, and he says, come on out. So we book an airplane flight right there at 8 o'clock at Stone Ridge. We, it's a 10 p.m. flight to Vegas. We fly to Vegas. Whoa, 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 whoa. This really happened? Landed in Vegas at 11 Vegas time. Go to Encore. And then we catch uh, a concert, Marshmallow. Oh my night. God! <laughs> yeah. This is like so. Okay, you're on my list. I want to change my list. Ryan Carter is ahead of Moose. So you just booked a. Who are you right now? This is like an episode it's, of Entourage. Yeah, it was a bucket list thing. So uh, me and my buddy, only two of us could pull it off. That is so cool. We went in our golf gear, no toothbrush. It was like a cleats. Cleats through the clear. Yeah, we had we had nothing. No, I didn't have a phone charger, toothbrush, deodorant, nothing. That is a great way to live. Yeah, we uh, we actually. How did Vegas go? We what was that like? Well, we, we got there. We couldn't get into the club right off the bat because you have to have pants to get into the club, and yeah. we didn't have. Of course, clothes. you can buy some. So we had to pull some strings, but we did end up getting into the club, uh, which was nice. We got to see the show. It was awesome. Uh, then we ended up doing okay on the tables and. Uh, the following day, pool party. This time it was chain smokers at the pool party. Saturday. What the hell? Yeah. Are you a Kardashian? No. And then <laughs> I, is my, going on? I had a family reunion on Sunday that I absolutely. You should have just airmailed that. Like I'm not coming home. I couldn't. I couldn't pass. Post it. Malone's here tomorrow, mom. Yeah. My mom would have. No. So when did you get home? So I had to. I had to leave Vegas. I fl flew out of Vegas at five o'clock. I was in Vegas for eighteen hours. God, that's so great. Maybe less. How spontaneous is that? Yeah. So got home and then was able to make it to the family reunion at 9.15 the following morning. Oh, God bless you. That's just great. I, uh, Hey, I, I'm going to turn us back to hockey because I want your take on something. Because I don't even know what to do with that. You're just, you're, you're basically 
on the episode of Entourage. So this video um, that just it makes me so happy, this uh, Kirill and um, Zuccarello working out. Um, uh, what, you know, so... Oh yeah, you this, ever, you ever this? See, yeah. So this this deal, uh, we got to ask Baldy. I don't know if you can too. see this. Uh, we got to put this in here. But so, how many reps is this that he spots him for? I don't know. What do you think he's counting in there? It's got to be Russian, right? Well, I just love it so much. So, I mean, we knew that Zuki and Kirill, Uncle Kirill, were down in Florida, living their best life. But this video pops up on some handle here. What is this even on? Follow the puck, and. He's just, he's like doing squats of tons of weight. But normally your buddy would spot you for like the last couple reps. No, he's with, Suki's with Carell the whole time. He's like, hey, I got you. I'm just going to do these with you. He's wearing like golf shorts, right? He's just, and it's just like 10 reps in a row. It's it's the greatest. We've it's gotta, Batman and Robin stuff. We, we might have to send Fox 9 in there to investigate this. Because I, you think it's for show? Yes, I do. <laughs> I think there's a chance. There's like, and they're like hollow plates. Yeah. Well, hey, we should throw something online. He's actually doing it, but the like Zuki spotting in the spot it's is just, right there. Like yeah. it's like they like, tongue in cheek. Yes. Like they know what they're doing. Exactly. Like, hey, let's have both of us drinking a uh, uh, a smoothie right afterwards and see, <laughs> you know, see how far we can push this, and if people think it's serious or right. not. No, but I, when that came across my feet i'm like this is just great content I, but, I can't believe it also like let's just let's also talk about kirill's outfit real quick yeah what is he wearing he here? probably has a versace white t-shirt on yeah and then he has full cotton shorts on if i'm not mistaken yeah torn maybe at the sides with pockets like that's that so that's how many honestly, plates is this honestly though? One, like they two, were three. walking down the beach in florida and it's florida's version of venice beach where there's just like a workout room they pop in, they do a couple of sets on a squat rack, pop back out, and they're on the beach again. Yeah, for, they rollerbladed there. Look at the tan on Kirill. The hair is blown back like he just got off the boat. Do you think maybe they came in on Vespas? <laughs> and they just did. He's like, hey, he's like, all we got to do is like eight reps yeah. total. Yeah. And we'll be right back to the yeah. peanut butter smoothie. We got the Vespas. I for the day we're going to be at the boardwalk the baby's going to meet us there just just if you could just snap off eight i'll spot you the whole time i'll spot you for all eight <laughs> we might have to talk to Kirill's pr guy too because if i'm not mistaken this is right in line with his normal like yeah the tire routine. flipping the tire flipping once a year, year. once this a year, time of year yeah. there's a workout video that that comes is out. epic he posts four times a year this yep. is one and this is the yep. workout post you get a fishing post <laughs> at a, like a canyon where you, and then you get the you got the tire flipping in the rain one of my all-time yeah. favorites you'll get like one home post where it's like something about jersey Russia. like like uh that one's pretty like um squeaky clean there'll be like one jersey and like a reverse retro like thumbs up go wild <laughs> yeah fishing in a siberian canyon yeah, yeah, yeah. training video and i think it's only three posts the whole year three. oh and there's usually one of him holding a goat at some point there's <laughs> one of him holding some sort of animal and this and this one they they got they have two birds one stone it's, yeah because i think zuki's actually holding zuki's Kirill. holding the goat he's like <laughs> zuki's like i'll take yeah he's like you're the goat i'll hold the goat um, yeah so i think we're right on track for the editorial calendar for uh those guys um i i, I don't know well, where it ranks couldn't... against tire flipping in the rain i think because it's the two of them i mean those are both great albums you... i'll listen to both of them over and over again on repeat it it can't help but make you wonder if if Kirill isn't a little superstitious though so he had 100 plus points the year he flipped the tire true and put the workout video out right now i don't think he put the workout video out or last year no he skipped one i think and now it's back this year yep and i like that he go to vegas i was just in it. vegas you can make these prop bets over 100 points for Kirill this year i think it's a lock based on that video. what was the what were the odds on it Did i don't you know i didn't it? look i just love that you went to to vegas like that that's so great how does that so how does that go over with wifey you're just like i'm not coming home i'm going to las vegas like i i don't even know she like was, she was prepped for it you're like this might get weird no i i knew the flights and the flight schedule because it was my buddy's 40th birthday party and i wanted to be there with him even if it was just for a short little bit uh, i knew i'd be burning the candle on both ends uh, but when we ended up doing well in the tournament 
that it was just like it went from like a 10 percent chance to like a 90 percent chance it flipped it and m- i think my wife knew instantly when she was like how'd you do in the golf tournament i said pretty well she's like okay she's we'll like i'll see you see in you. three days yeah see you sunday morning <laughs> don't die i uh that's that's awesome yeah that's she, i don't think she was stoked because she was on soccer duty then she uh she logged a lot of miles on the vehicle so she's an absolute saint uh for this but um, yeah, it was, uh, we had a good weekend. So what, uh, other hockey stuff, um, I'm pretty excited. Do you see they're doing this red carpet opening night deal? For the looks, wild. Yeah, it looks pretty legit. So as I understand it, they're going to kind of set up a big walkway down kind of river center. You get there a little early. Dudes are going to be rolling in in their game day fits and I think you'll be able to get pretty close to them, and they're going to walk kind of the red carpet mm-hmm. into that Florida game. And what's fun about it is if you think of Wild on 7th and our whole DNA, right, show up, watch them walk the red carpet. It's early because they come in a couple hours early, and then you just head back to the bars maybe for a couple hours and then get get going and then come back for puck drop against uh, Matty Kachuk in the Florida Panthers. So I think that red carpet thing could be tasty. I'm into it. Lots of loafers, maybe to the shin cut pants, you know, maybe some jewelry. I don't maybe a maroon sport coat on someone. There's there's that angle. There's also another angle to why we might as a podcast like that whole setup. Yep. If you recall the playoffs, the wild did well on the eight o'clock starts, nine o'clock starts. Yep. Because the crowd was a little loose. Oh, they'll so, be loose. So if you get the people there early home opener, last year the Wild lose their first four. It took them till Christmas to catch up. If they got to get hot out of the gates, I like the play from management here to get the fans in the building a couple hours early, then give them a, a gap two hours' time to. That's you know. right. Hey, why don't you go walk down the street? Here's a token. Yeah. <laughs> here's, a, here's a plastic spider ring. Just go down there and see what happens. It's called Come Tom. Back. It's called Tom Reed's. Yep. Now don't be late. Come back two hours. We want you here when that puck drops. But whatever you do between now and then, I just want you to have a good time. I I wonder. Uh, hey, do you think we can learn from your Vegas experience for the Wild? Right, breaking the mold. So you come in hot from St. Louis Park. You're like, you're a gate crasher. You're all of it is set up for you just to kind of mail it in. And you just relaxed, and you just let go, and you were playing free, and you end up playing some of the best golf of your life, and you wake up in Vegas the next morning with marshmallow in your bed and, <laughs> and the chain smokers at the brunch or whatever. So is that kind of – I think that's what wild fans and wild people need. And this golf tournament's the start of that, right? This is the last day of freedom for these guys. Hopefully they, uh, they get loose. And I want, them to, I want our hockey team to be like you – telling your wife this is these are the one way these are the non-stop flights delta to vegas honey just i'll see you when i see you <laughs> i think that's a great way to if we can act that way as fans i think we'll win the cup you want to know how great yeah i i agree with you totally you want to know how great my my wife is too i'm like ah, i got i gotta go i gotta leave it's like five o'clock in vegas she's like just stay come home tomorrow no way yeah wow that's a trap sometimes though you got to be careful. Like it might, it actually might have been a trap. Yeah, it's like I might have like passed she tries to see how greedy you are. I might have passed the test, and that might actually have made her more mad than me staying over that I passed that yeah. test. Yeah, like she maybe wanted me to fail that test and say, "Okay, I'll stay." You got to be real careful when they start serving up stuff like that. Like, no, no, you know what? Why don't you actually? The Wild don't play till you know a couple weeks. Why don't you just stay out there? Get a townhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Make friends. That's where you're like, okay, I better get home. I better go. Hey, let's get a quick honey update. Um, just so if anybody's, you know, needs a little transition into the Matt Boldy interview. Um, my wife, um, I told you this, I think she doesn't use your honey unless we're using it for something good. So I'll be in the kitchen and she's like, no, 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 no. Don't use Carter's honey on that. We're saving Carter's honey for like good things. But if it's a general honey occasion, just use this off-the-shelf stuff. So that's weird. We're kind of saving your honey for special honey occasions and then using generic honey. So where are you at with the honey harvest? Well, so you can you can go ahead and freely use it. Okay, because there's more coming. Things. Yes. There's supply. There is. Okay, good. There was drought this year. All right. Uh, especially throughout the spring, I thought the honey crop wouldn't be that great. Uh, I thought the bees would be stressed. Uh, but I had one or two, I have four hives. Two were really, 
two really kicked butt. Strong. They, oh, they kicked butt. Did you name your hives? No. Okay. I have actually one of them I do have a name for. Yeah, the hard hive. But uh, yeah, the each girl kind of has their own hive, and then we have a fourth one too, which is the hard hive. Um, but yeah, g- great honey crap. Good light honey this year. We have got a couple hundred pounds. Uh, we've got it jarred up. I'm trying to get ahead of the game this year. We've harvested. I'd say two thirds of it, and I'll do the other third of it probably tomorrow. I need a nice hot day. It's supposed to be 80 degrees, so this maybe is the last nice stretch of hot weather, and then boom, it'll be done. So you put on like a suit, like a hazmat suit, and you go out there. And how does this work? Yeah, to harvest the honey. What are you wearing? So first of Half all, shield? the the first thing you have to do, yeah, you got to get you got to get dressed up. The bees don't get that mad this time of year. As long as there's a nectar flow, the bees typically aren't that aggressive, and there is a nectar flow. So if you are walking past sedums or other fall flowers, goldenrod, you take a look, you'll see honeybees on them, working it pretty good right now. But once those dry up, that's it, nectar flow is done, then the bees get real defensive over their honey. But during a strong nectar flow, the bees aren't very aggressive. Uh, so I'll get dressed up nonetheless, and I'll get out there, and uh, I do have a bee escape, a triangle bee escape, sound like a nerd, and that just is a one-way trap. The bees can go out, but they can't get back in, so you have to leave that on for a couple of days. The other thing you can do is you get a solar panel with a little piece of, like, fabric underneath it, and you spray that with, like, a it's a stinky kind of acid. And you put that on, the solar panel gets hot, it heats it up, and then the scent pushes all the bees out, where that takes 10 or 15 minutes. So that's what I'll do tomorrow, uh, clear out the hive and or this honey supers in 10, 15 minutes, pull them off, take them over, cut the wax off, spin them out, harvest the honey, filter it, put it in a bottle, give it to John King. Hey, if anybody's been listening to the last three minutes and just crashed their car on the side of the road because you fell asleep, you know, when, when we... Uh... <laughs> Hey, when we say at the start of the podcast, your favorite wild podcast, it could be kind of a throwaway statement, but the amount of times you just said nectar flow, and I don't know what it is, and it just sounds awesome, like, <laughs> and just that, that, that was like, like public radio, like that was amazing. That's the reason we are the best is nectar flow count. You know, we said nectar flow seven times on this pod. <laughs> we got a guy going to Vegas just on a hot one. It's great. And, uh. We're going to bring Matt Boldy in here. For the listeners, this is sponsored by Duke Cannon. Um, if your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, you got to get some grooming products from Duke Cannon. But um, we were told not to really talk to him about golf. We're which talking is golf. Just the best. It's so good. Like we're at a golf tournament <laughs> with Matt Boldy hanging over a, a golf course, and you're not supposed to talk about golf. Maybe so we should make it so weird that we don't talk about <laughs> just, golf at all. Like, have you watched The Lioness on so, Paramount Plus? Do you ever just, play cricket? <laughs> um, yeah, just be like uh, pickleball. I see a lot of pickleball on the Instagram. Yeah. Is, can you rank the current pickleball guys? Like this, yes. th- these grounds look great for croquet. You ever play croquet? I think this will be interesting if you're listening at home. Just watch how Ryan and I try to navigate not talking about golf at the Wild Golf Tournament with the Wild's best golfer, Matt Boldy, brought to you by Duke Cannon. All right, we're here with uh, Mr. Matt Boldy, uh, former Boston College Eagle, like all good young upstanding men, including Bill Guerin and others. Uh, We're here at the wild off the tee golf tournament and uh i understand you you recently went out to las vegas didn't you go on this kind of um young stars boondoggle or something what was this vegas trip like with the nhl uh it was pretty cool i mean uh you're you're kind of typical media tour nothing uh too exciting well uh happy for it to be over and and kind of get back here it was a short trip nothing nothing too fun so what do you do? You go in, you take a couple photos, you do all the stuff that you probably see on like NHL social stuff or whatever, and then you're out? Yeah, kind of uh, everything you could imagine. Um, every question in the book kind of thrown at you for all the, the different kind of TV stuff that goes on. So you do kind of the same thing over and over for ESPN. <laughs> Sports sounds like net. you lo- sounds like you loved it. Loved it. You, you can ask Dylan about it. I was I was thrilled. So when you get off in Vegas and you got you know Bedard and and the Kachuk brothers and all these guys, who are the guys when you see them in like the hallway of the hotel? You're like, okay, this will make it better. Like this is gonna kind of suck, yeah, but like at least these there. guys are here. Who who would be your top other team players to kind of help you survive a gauntlet like that? 
Um, we actually got to bring a guest. Ooh, nice. So, uh, I brought one of my best friends from uh, my childhood growing up from Boston. So he flew in with me, which which is pretty cool. Kind of uh, everything uh, is taken care of by, by the league. So we had some fun together and obviously only see him a couple times a year. But uh, a lot of the guys I played uh, at the national program with were there. So guys like Cole Caulfield, the Matty Beneers, kind of those are the guys I, I hung out a bit. But uh, I don't know. I don't really get too, too starstruck. Um, I don't know why I've always been like that. So, I mean, you see the, the Sidney Crosby's and Dry Sidles and McDavid's and stuff, and it's pretty cool, but it's uh, pretty quiet. So I, Where'd they have you posted up? From, from what hotel? Uh, we're at Encore. Nice. So, oh. Good spot. It's also, like, different, I think, to be starstruck against, like, your peers, dudes that you play against. Like, that. that it, I'd be starstruck. Let's say, for example, there was, like, a – like Aaron Rodgers was there, like a football mm. player or, you know, baseball player. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's – look at that so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. But when it's, like, your own sport, you're kind of like, oh, hey, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, you exactly. It's, it's not exactly. that big a deal, It's right? uh, a little different when I think they they at least have an idea of who you are. Um, <laughs> uh, that makes yeah, it a little what, bit easier. Yeah, that's when you're wondering, hey, you yeah. know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, good. Uh, so, what, so is that the carrot that kind of dangle to get you there is you can bring a guest – like, uh, like how does that go? Does, does the request come into Sicky? Then he's got to ask you, and then you're just like, yay or nay? Could you turn it down? From Sicky's point of view, I had no choice, <laughs> um, which which was fine. I mean, I, I didn't mind it. It was a pretty cool experience going there. But, yeah, definitely being able to bring a friend helped. Uh, Sicky asked me, and then I was honestly going to go alone, and then my buddy called me that day, and Sicky had told me I could bring a guest, so I kind of just threw it at him, thinking that, that he'd honestly say no, and he was like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't miss that. So I, I figured we uh, might as well kind of buckle up and go have some fun. So uh, we were supposed to ask you, now, did you get a new place in the cities here? I did, yeah. And do you have a, an interior designer? <laughs> I had someone decorate it, yeah. So did they decorate it with? Like an eight by eight Beatles poster, or I mean, twelve by twelve. What is it? Oh, uh, that was my old place. That was uh, <laughs> that was the decoration at your old place. Yeah, went on Amazon, thought I was getting a nice big, uh, big poster, and ended up being a, a little a, probably ma- a magnet square. Twelve by eight little Rolling Stones <laughs> poster, which uh, was not what I expected. Yeah. I got ripped off for sure. I thought so, I was getting such a good deal. So cool. tell us about the designer now. Uh, well, or the design. It's pretty nice. It's come together good. Um, like a grown-up place. Because we were trying yeah. to figure out if you had, like, the Xbox my, cords yeah. and, like, the no, one My bet was you had a – it looked like a college dorm, a bad – Oh, you got, like, a man house. Xbox TV I'm and cords uh, everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's adult. That's He's all grown up. growing up? Yeah, I painted it. I did I did everything. Really? So everything you could imagine. Yeah. You did it? I didn't paint it. Oh, I thought. I paid someone to paint it. So it's uh, it's come together nice. Yeah, I got – decorations books everything looks you, good you do any seasonal interest <laughs> books. like you know it's fall <laughs> you are grown uh, up i got no, books i do no no decorating myself by any means well except for maybe one of those books was it nope i i didn't bring one book so you, you had the books bought i yeah all is the there, books were is there any chance you'll read a single one of those books uh no more of them are like <laughs> maybe the binder the picture books so i kind of just scroll through <laughs> look at the pictures but other than that that's about it yeah, good. That's hey, awesome. I want to talk about um, this group of guys, this the the wild boy band of that just crushed, summer. that just won summer, right? So it's let's put you in there, Addison Walker, um, Faber, Shaw. Uh, Shaw limping around. Let's randomly have Jake Middleton and Alex Goligoski in there yeah. somehow because they have different relationships with their wives than I do. So how how does this? You're at Nickelback, Zach Bryan. State Fair. I saw you at the State Fair. Yep. That just had to be the best summer ever, right? Like yeah. you were, you guys were just killing it. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I think uh, I go home to Boston every summer ever since I was little, and it seemed to do the same thing. I figured, why not try something new? And I obviously knew Shazi was going to be here, and and Sammy and Fabes, and and love those guys. And then Addy stayed, and Midsy's here. It's it's quite the group to kind of run around with all the young guys. Um, always up for anything there, there weren't too many no's this summer which was pretty fun yeah it's like a yes summer exactly like, here we yeah. go and if you said no then then you heard it from everyone so it was more uh 
saying yes just to avoid the scrutiny there. Yeah. What, what was a, a moment from the summer? Maybe it was something that was way better than you thought it was going to be, or it's a concert, or if you look back at your summer, you know, when your phone makes one of those weird videos for you in a year and it's like mm -hmm. the summer of yes, what are going to be a couple of moments that were just kick-ass for you guys this summer? Um, Concerts. Dude, we, went up, we went up north a couple times yeah. with everyone. Um, we went up for Lakes Jam country concert up there which was awesome that was a super fun weekend and then uh going up for that golf tournament everyone came up the the whole group that you just mentioned so we we had a lot of fun up there going to uh zorbas and stuff like that so well that's what i was gonna say that you made a lot of other people's summers i bet too i was up at, i was up at, i was up on on goal randomly at zorbas standing next to a Hammerschlagen, and who walks in? These guys walk yeah. in to play Hammerschlagen. And ev everybody in that place was was just, it made their night. They're like, oh my gosh, look, it's, and they're just being guys, you know, just hanging out, playing Hammerschlagen with anybody that wanted to play. And yeah. uh, If I mean, you were was, living your best life at any point this summer, having a great day, you would see these These guys, guys rolled in. They would like <laughs> That's walk, what I mean. They would like walk through, like, we were at the state fair, we get a picture in front of my wife has a bench there, not weird at all. And we get a photo in front of it, and these guys all walk through. Of course, Boldy, take our picture. And I'm like, honey, you can't ask him to take our picture. He's got to be at least in the picture with us. So we have this just one photo of just all the people, and Boldy's just sitting in the photo with us. I'm like, yeah, if you were doing something right this summer in the state of Minnesota, and you didn't see the boy band in the summer of Yes!, uh, I'd be surprised. We were everywhere. It was about a year ago this time that we were wake surfing for a Posted Up episode. Did you get any of that in this summer? Uh, I got one. One of my, uh, up north, one of my buddies that was in my class at BC actually lives up there. So he brought, he brought us out one day. Um, it's gotten better. It's gotten better? It was easy to improve from that day. That was like, when I was with you, that was the second time I think I've ever done it. So I've probably done it four times since that. So it's, it's gotten better. It's not. Close to well, good. you were good that day. No, I was, I was not. Couldn't let go of the rope. Comparing you to myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta show you. I wonder if you've Get seen. Off. We gotta ask him about this little video. Yeah. So you had to have seen it. The video of Kirill and Zuki working out. I hope he hasn't actually. I don't know if I have. Probably. Really? Yeah. Were Zuki okay. spotting Kirill on a squat rack? I didn't even know that was Zuki spotting. Just, him. just watch how <laughs> many, hey, watch how many reps he's doing. By the yeah. way, he spots him for like oh, eleven. Yeah. He's so, a beast. I mean, I saw the video. I did not know that was Zuki. So yet. now we have to realize look at, that look Zuki's harness to closer. Him. Do you think that that like that's actually how Kirill is working out? Like he has cotton shorts on. Those those are Versace 100%. shorts. Hundred <laughs> percent. Not even sweating. I bet. No. Yeah. Just no. ripping it out. He yeah. probably been in the gym for ten minutes and started doing that. Yeah. Zuki probably started to get like started sneezing. There's no chance. They wear cologne the for much. sure too. Like he's wearing cologne at the gym. Yeah, he's like, let's rollerblade down there. A little Tom Ford. Yeah, and just tss, tss, maybe on the wrist, and then yeah. And I wonder what he's saying to him. He's like, you can do it, Uncle Kirill. <laughs> you know. Gosh, what do you think his sneakers are? They're probably oh, he's got like those Gucci thousand dollar. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, nice Gucci. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hey, so in my group today, we got Brock Faber. Uh, you've golfed with him. What are we dealing with here? What's the limitations? What are the Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats? SWAT analysis? Um, honestly, he's a lot better than he thinks he is. Okay, so it's a he, confidence issue. Yeah, he likes to talk like he sucks, and he's really not that bad. Okay. Um, we'll build him up. Yeah. He's a sandbagger. No, he's not because he, he won't bet you anything. He'll, he'll just <laughs> say he sucks and then go out there and be just fine considering. And he can't chip. That's okay. a struggle. Tough and short game. Tough. If you make him make all the short putts, he struggles. He okay. likes to scoop him up, that's for sure. So he's a scramble player. Yeah. He's going to be a scramble player. Somebody will pick him up around the green. Yeah, he's he's going to be good enough, yeah. But tee to green, he'll get you there. If his driver's good, I've seen him whiff too many times with yeah. the driver. Like, full miss, like, on four different occasions, and I've golfed him, like, so, three times. So that's just not okay. I whiffed this weekend. To be a professional hockey player and and not adequate at golf. You have your summers off. Just, you're, yeah. you're a pro athlete. There's just this like is not no what he excuse. needs for his confidence. We're gonna build Brock up. <laughs> yeah. What if he listens to this? Like, well, come I'm, on. Just, I'm just all I'm saying is he maybe has to put in a, an hour simulator. Yeah, something. Just he played a lot this summer. Him and Walks were were playing a bunch, a bunch, like three, four times a week. Really? Yeah. 
So we could have gotten better. It's been a while since I played with him. Do you get a sign? Like, so when you do this, do they say, hey, Boldy, we got you with Tria or you're playing with, uh, I don't know, whatever. Do they tell you who you're playing with or you just show up and you're just on the card and you hope you got a good group? Yeah, you just show up and uh, <laughs> kind of meet the group and, and kind of go from there. But, uh, I mean, last year I had a pretty good group, so I couldn't complain. So we'll see how this year goes. Maybe they'll run you back. He's yeah. not. He's actually not telling the truth. Yeah, it goes by seniority. And okay. then they get to pick the groups they want. And Brock Faber is the newest, youngest okay. member of the and that's team. that's why he's with me. So that's right. why he's with you. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? Uh, you know, we're going to have a good time with Brock. We're going to build him up. Uh, usually when he goes to golf tournaments, he loses his wallet. So that could be good, yeah. too. We can we can work that in. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to bring the glasses out, make him feel comfortable. I hope he takes that as flattery. We'll see. That's our team name, Brock Faber's Glasses. That's what like we're going it. with. Let's BFG. get into Let's get into some real hockey talk here this year. So training camp's coming. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are fit. You guys have put in the work. Um, are, like, are you ready for camp? What's the vibe? What are you feeling? Yeah, I think everyone's pretty excited to kind of get going. It's Once everyone gets back, I feel like it, it kind of starts up and you get that kind of locker room feel back where, where everyone wants to, to kind of get the first game underway and get training camp over with and, and kind of right into the season. So. Now that everyone's back, it's it's been pretty fun. I mean, summer's all over. We were saying this was our last weekend. So, um, but other than that, and you guys proved it this morning. Like this is, yeah. the, it's early. We're we were here. We started the podcast at eight thirty. You guys were on the ice starting at what seven thirty? Yeah, we were seven fifteen this morning. Seven fifteen. It's like it's like Monday hits. It's go time. Yeah, exactly. You know, message sent. Like we're here to play hockey now. Are you officially reported? Are they are like you're in, or you no. still have a couple free days? All captains practices right now, so nothing's mandatory. But uh, when's mandatory? When's physicals like? and stuff tomorrow though, physicals right? Physicals are Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, media day Wednesday, and then first skate Thursday. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. tonight's the last night of freedom. I mean, yeah, unless you push part. it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That's well, it's good. not like when you like when you play in the NHL. It's not like you're in jail for six yeah, months. It's, but yeah, but it's, it's like you know, <laughs> you're, it's, but it's like summer. It's yeah. Like being, yeah. A, being a student, you just threw your math. Basically, book out what the you're saying window is window of the bus. It, like this is the Sunday before Labor Day. Correct. That's what you're feeling today. It's the Sunday before Labor Day. Tomorrow's your last day off, but you know school starts on Tuesday. Yep. You know, that's yep. basically what today is. It's, an, it's a nice laid back. You're going to go out on the golf course. You're going to do a couple of things, but you're going to mind your P's and Q's and you'll be ready to go because school starts on Tuesday. They're doing a uh, red carpet event for opening night. Um, have you thought about what you're going to wear? Do you have anything? I know you got the Can house. You got outfit? the grown-up house. You got the, the suite set up now. You're all grown up. What about the wardrobe? You got a guy? Will you carry a book this in? Is... You should oh, carry one of your yeah. books. <laughs> My big <laughs> books are like this big. He's like, just, uh, it's just even <laughs> better. Just looks cool. Um, that he's reading the, a book. Do the Don't bother him. Yeah. about it. Um, no, uh, that's the first I heard about the whole red carpet thing. Yeah, so, I think uh, it's a nice little saunter. I'm going to have to uh, maybe invest in some some new outfits. Well, if you here. need help, let us know. All we'll right. be your uh, exterior designer. I got, yeah, I got some new suits on the way, so hopefully they're here in time, but I'm going to go go out on a limb and say they won't be, so. All right, well, so now I'm intrigued. What, what kind of suits you got going? Do you have the fancy liner on the inside? You pick your own? Yeah. Nice. Do. So. What'd you go with? Uh, I got four new ones coming, so. Because you have been modeling lately, it looks like on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, I saw that. Day. That was they were very step brothers. Yeah, those I've photos. Been Sicky's favorite favorite text message this summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, I got the basics. I got got some cooler ones this time around. So a little bit of everything. Good. So you found chemistry with uh, Marcus after the deadline last year, and um, he signs a new deal. Like, what what are the goals, or what are you feeling going into this year? I mean, you. We don't know for sure, but it seems like, you know, that you guys are a lot. You know, coaches like to do pairs, and then they mm -hmm. mix a third person in there. But it seems like you two really you played well together. You had chemistry. What's the expectation for you this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about playing with him, hopefully playing with Eki too. I mean, those guys are awesome. So I think just the chemistry with him, I think we, we mesh really well together. We both want to score and are creative and can make plays, but I think he kind of plays the game uh, plays the game so fast in, in north-south, and I think I kind of add a little bit more of the, the kind of east-west and 
staying over pucks and, and stuff like that. So I think that kind of combination meshes well together. But it's like a compliment. Yeah, exactly. Like he's a he's the pace car. You had to keep up a little bit, exactly. but then you got the puck. Yeah. He, you he know. makes me keep up with him, and I think I make him play a little bit more creative and skilled and stuff like that, which he's more than capable of doing. So having a guy like that, I mean, guy who's played forever and so good, just kind of has been through it all. It's a good guy to have have in your corner what i miss about playing is like the clarity of goal setting like you know what you want and then either you succeed or you fail and then you kind of hit use the summer to hit the reset button and you reset your goals right obviously there are team goals and it's to make the playoffs to win a stanley cup have you made personal goals for the year on what you're trying or what you want to do um i think i'm a little bit different in that way um for the most part it's kind of I've never really been one to value that, like, oh, I have to, oh, I I have to score this 40. many goals. No, yeah. I think uh, I've always kind of looked at goals and assists as the same. It's never been I have to score to be happy. Like, yeah, I want to score a bunch of goals, but if I'm 5, 10 goals and whatever, 50 assists or whatever, it's just as happy, I'd say. So that's kind of my thought process going in. I think a lot of it comes kind of as the season goes on and there's different goals and different periods of games and stretches that you want to be really good in and kind of looking at it more that way more of the consistency route where things aren't going well to kind of get off that train and, and kind of get going again so that's kind of where my goals come from more than kind of sitting back at the beginning and saying this is what I have to accomplish. But how about like in specialty areas or something like do you, I want to maybe help on draws a little more power play I, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I have maybe a little bit more of a shoot first mentality like anything you're going in the season with like mentally trying to be prepared for? Yeah, I mean, you do a lot of stuff in the summer. It's uh, simple stuff, one-timers, that seems simple. But obviously, if you can get an extra four goals on, on the power play just from hitting the one-timer in the right spot, it, it, it adds up. So um, kind of stuff like that. I mean, you have the goal to be to be good all the time, but it's it's different. Different for sure. All right, Handicap, the, this is wild off the tee, year two. Who's going to win this thing? Uh, what 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 do you think? Last year, Sam Steele, I think, stole this one out of everybody. Broke hearts. Who's uh, who's on top of the leaderboard at the end of the day today? Um, you can call your own shot too. I mean, I don't well, know who you're playing. I like Marcus Johansson's game a lot. He's pretty good. So, just got new clubs though, so that could be an issue for him. Okay, that's um, a gear change. But he is uh, he's he's really good. I played with him for the first time a few weeks ago and. He can play, so if he's able to kind of pull it together, then uh, I'd put my money on his team. All right, he says Marcus Johansson. He didn't participate well, in the summer of yes, but he's going to be in the fall and winter of yes with Mr. Boldy. Exactly. They're rolling the greens right now, so they're going to be pretty fast, and we might want to think about keeping them a few more minutes based on how my weekend went, coming in hot, letting go, playing free. Yeah. Hey, don't put any pressure on yourself out Never. there, right? Never. Just go out and play. Do your thing. And if exactly. we got to keep you late so that you don't hit the range, no doubt, <laughs> go out there. Come in on two wheels. Yeah. Just slide over the <laughs> dashboard. No, it'll be it'll be good. I, I'm excited. This is always a good event. I One of the things I always like, I don't know if it'll happen today, but when the guys go back out, so it's like the event yeah, yeah. happens. So, well, that was on the putting green last year. They, they tick the boxes with the yeah. sponsors, kiss babies, shake hands, and then it's like, all of a sudden, you see like heartsy kind of. Get they the just kinda, They're on a. There's like 12 carts yeah. going back out gambling. Private I mean, that's the, said, hey, 100 bucks a hole. Let's go. Yeah, that's the real <laughs> golf. That's where the. That's the last day of uh, before. Hey man, Labor thanks. Day. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, have fun out there. Good luck uh, training camp, uh, and throughout the season, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you. kick some ass, man. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Appreciate it.